All right. Welcome, welcome to the attendees that are joining us now. You should be able to hear me. Um, we're going to just get started in just a moment once we have uh, more attendees come in. Thank you all for joining. Good. I think I see a few familiar faces and a few new faces. So welcome to the new folks that are, are new to Florida Humanities. This is really exciting. So the webinar that you are on today is So You Want to Apply for Florida Talks. So if you are interested in applying for this grant opportunity, the Florida Talks funding opportunity, uh, then you are in the right place. <laughs> so good work. Um, and we have other webinars just to let you know about our community project grants program. So that is live and up on our grant ed hub right now. So if you're interested in watching that, um, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at that later. But today we're gonna talk all about Florida Talks to give you the ins and outs of this program. So welcome, welcome. All right, hi everyone. My name is Lindsay Morrison and I am the grants director here at Florida Humanities. Joining me is my colleague, Lisa Lennox, who is our digital media and program manager for Florida Talks, um, as well as all of our other digital media uh, programs that we have out there. So we're really lucky to have her on this call. And what's going to happen is I'm going to leave this webinar. It'll probably last about 25 to 30 minutes um, of me talking to you guys. I'm gonna turn my camera off so you can focus on the webinar itself. And at the very end is where I'm going to then open it up for a question and answer. So we can just get through the presentation and then have our, uh, our conversation at the very end. So as we are going through, if you have any questions about anything that I'm saying, um, go ahead and drop it into either the question and answer option section or in the chat box. And in the chat box, you can um, say to all panelists and attendees your question which may be good so that other attendees can see if the question has already been asked. Um, so it doesn't get asked multiple times. All right. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So today, what is being covered? We are going to go over Florida Humanities because if you are unfamiliar with Florida Humanities as an organization, we wanna give you a little, uh, little introduction about who we are and why we have this Florida Talks funding opportunity. Uh, then, of course, the bulk of the conversation will be talking about the Florida Talks funding opportunity, the speakers directory, how to use the directory, um, and what kind of speakers are on there. And then finally, we're going to go looking at the application itself. So what successful application looks like, um, all about cost share. If cost share is that nebulous word for you and it's a little bit intimidating, we're going to make it really easy so that you don't feel intimidated and that you're going to be a cost share pro by the end of this webinar. And then lastly, we're gonna have a question and answer. So um, overall, this webinar should take no more than an hour, but I suspect it'll be about 45 to 40 minutes. Because Florida Talks, the point is, is a really streamlined program and it's super easy to apply and get funding. So who you're hearing from today, again, my name is Lindsay Morrison. I'm the grants director here at Florida Humanities. Um, I've been with us for about two years now. Um, so I'm so happy to be part of this team and Lisa Lennox has been here much longer than I have and she is our phenomenal digital media and program manager and she is your point of contact for the Florida Talks program. So while I am talking to you guys today about Florida Talks, if you have any questions about this program or if you want to apply for funding, Lisa is the person that you're going to be communicating with. So at the very end, uh, you, we will have an email address for you. Um, and we'll also send that in the follow-up email so you don't have to worry about writing it down. It'll all be sent directly to everyone who has registered for this webinar. So a little overview about who we are, Florida Humanities. As it says here, our mission is to preserve, promote, and share the history, literature, culture, and personal stories that offer Floridians a better understanding of themselves, their communities, and their state. And who we are, is, is really the statewide affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities. So every state has a Humanities Council. Alaska has one, Maine has one, Hawaii has one, and we are Florida's. So we serve all of Florida nonprofit, cultural institutions, cities, um, governments, everything like that. And we support public humanities programming. That is our purpose. 
Now, humanities can be a little bit of a difficult concept to understand because it can seem so broad, and it is. The humanities disciplines, as you see here, covers history, literature, poetry, culture, art history, archaeology, anthropology. Uh, I won't read them all, but you can see here it covers a lot. But what this really boils down to is the humanities is how we understand what it means to be human, right? And when people think of the humanities right off the bat, they think of this guy, huh? Aristotle? Well, no, <laughs> the humanities is a lot more than people like Aristotle. Of course, he um, operated in the realm of the humanities, but the humanities is really, like I said, the process of pursuing an understanding of our shared human experience. It enables us to think creatively and critically, to reason and to ask questions. So when you're looking at public humanities programming, what you're seeing is a lot of dialogue between people who have different experiences about their life, different understandings of the world, different perspectives. And what it does is it fosters that constructive dialogue and puts that little light bulb above your head, that aha moment, that, that clicking of, oh, I didn't see the world like this before. I, now I understand who I am more as a person, but also our neighbors. Because one thing that's important about the humanities, and of course, as we're coming uh, into 2020, uh, 2021 after uh, 2020, the humanities doesn't mean that everyone has to leave the conversation agreeing with each other. It just means we understand one another a little bit more and have that deeper sense of empathy for our neighbors and our community. So the humanities are really, I think, one of the, one of the coolest disciplines out there. So today, we're gonna to talk about one of the funding opportunities that enables us to support public humanities throughout the state. And this is our most streamlined templated program that is so incredibly easy for people to apply to and for people to get funding. And this is our Florida Talks Speakers Program. It is a re-envisioned program about our Speakers Bureau that we had um, a few years back and for many years prior, but we really re-envisioned this to make this a lot easier for smaller organizations and institutions to get the speakers they need and quickly and boom, boom, out the door funding. Um, so we saw a really high response to this program. Um, so we're really, really excited to, to keep delivering it. So what Florida Talks is, is we offer you up to $1,000 in funding to host between one and three in-person or virtual programs from a list of curated speakers that we have on what's called the speakers directory. Uh, this directory changes every couple of years. We get new speakers on, new speaker or old speakers go off. Um, so the key component of Florida Talks is you have to select speakers that are on this speakers directory. But what's also cool is that we provide you templated marketing materials and templated evaluation tools. So we really wanna make this as simple as possible for you to just select speakers who already have their presentations set in stone. They know exactly what they're talking about. We feel comfortable. We've given them our Florida Humanity stamp of approval. And all you have to do is apply for funding and post them at your site, either virtually or in person. So it really could not be easier. Now, a lot of folks um, do ask the questions, can we host speakers that are outside of the speaker's directory? And the short answer for that is at this time, no, you do have to select only the speakers on this directory, but we're gonna give you a little snapshot about who these speakers are and show you that um, there really are quite a number of them. So let's take a look at the 2021 speakers directory. So here it is on our website and don't worry, one of the things I'm going to send to you after this presentation is a link to the 2021 speakers directory. So you don't have to go searching for it on our website. So overall, we have over 100 presentations coming from 53 speakers that range from historians to scholars to um, performers, songwriters, um, really just a large gamut of Florida, um, Florida scholars and presenters that all, like I said, have the Florida Humanities stamp of approval. And you can see here at the top, we've divided them into sections based on what they talk about. So the easiest way to take a look in the speaker's directory, say if you want to have a series of three presentations on one topic, for example, ethnic heritage, you would click on the ethnic heritage button at the top and that would bring up all the speakers that have presentations geared towards that. It makes it really easy. So you can just click on each one and see what programs they offer. So for example, we're gonna pick on Basma Alawali, 
and we're going to look at what she has done and um, the programs she has available. So as you can see here, once you click on Bosma's picture, it comes out with a bio about her and her incredible background and then the programs that she has available. And right now she just has one program that she presents on and it's called Refugee Stories down there under programs available. You can also see that we have the contact information and if she provides this program in person and virtual. And yes, she does. You can see both in person and virtual right here. And you can also download the speaker listing, which creates a one page PDF about all this good information. So we're going to take a look at one example of someone who applied for a Florida Talks grant and were awarded funding. Um, this is WUWF Public Media based in Pensacola, and they applied for $1,000 in funding. Now with this $1,000, they put 900 towards speaker fees, 300 for each presenter. And 300 is the magic number because this is the contracted amount that every single speaker on our speakers directory has agreed to charge no more than. So the good news is that it makes all these speakers very accessible to smaller organizations, um, no matter your funding revenue or stream, they're all gonna charge no more than $300. And we also, um, they also applied for $100 in promotion. So in total, they got $1,000 in funding. Now, if you only want to bring in one speaker, um, that is totally fine too. You can apply for maybe $300 if you just wanna bring in that one speaker or two speakers. So you can apply for less than $1,000. Um, I've seen people come through with you know, 300, 500, 600. It really depends on the program that you want to put together on your end and that benefits your community. But you can apply for no more than 1,000. So another cool thing about Florida Talks is that the templated promotion um, and our kind of partnership in helping you market your programs. So what you'll see here on the left is a snippet from our events calendar. So we do require that all applicants submit event listing forms um, to record the three to two, you know, the one to two to three events that you are hosting. So that gets put on our website that we can then share on Facebook and try to get people to attend your virtual or in-person event. That is insanely cool because, you know, you could of course have these speakers come in on your end, but partnering with us and applying for this $1,000 enables us to help share your programs and your events as well. And also a tip, if you partner with a public media station and maybe doing promotion, um, they can write really engaging stories um, to get the word out even further. So of course this applicant was WUF, WUWF, so they have a built-in um, publicity section. So you can see they wrote an article um, about Bosma's talk and that we shared it on Facebook. So it makes it very, very streamlined. And like I said, we have over 100 of these presentations. Bosma's is just one that I mentioned, um, but we have over 100 from 53 speakers. So what you can do is really peruse the speakers directory and see the, the just the vast amount of, of scholarship, of research, of talks that are surely one of them is gonna be of interest to your constituency. And you just have to apply for funding. We award funding, the approval um, rate covers around 95%. Um, and if you are familiar with our Community Project Grants program, you'll uh, know that this is a really good funding amount. This is not common for, for funders to have this high funding opportunity. And this is because we have the funds available. We make it really simple, really streamlined. Um, it's, it's difficult to not get funding through Florida Talks. And especially if you work with Lisa Lennox in advance um, and, and really you know, walk hand in hand with her in working on your application. So, this is all to say, if you apply for funding, you have a very good chance of getting it. Now, of course, the detail when you apply for funding, you have a good amount of time here to think about this. So after this webinar, you can sit back, chew over it, and then reach out to Lisa and apply. And the deadline is June 25th, 2021 at 12 p.m. noon. So do keep a note on that. All our grant deadlines are at noon. Um, and this funds programs between September 1st 2021 and December 31st, so this fall. Uh, and also another good thing about this program is that if you apply by the late June, June 25th, you'll hear July 16th. That's an incredibly quick turnaround. Um, so if you'll pretty much get funding um, 
very, very soon after you apply, uh, if you are awarded. So how do you apply? What are the steps to, uh, for this templated program? Well, first, of course, you're going to brainstorm your project. You're gonna think about maybe who your audience is, what kind of programs they would like to hear. Um, and maybe you could even do a survey to your group. Um, if you have a, you know, a few like five to 10 programs that you think would be a cool fit, maybe ask them. Say, if we have this opportunity, what programs would you like to, would you like to get? And then before you apply, you're going to reach out to those speakers and confirm that they are in fact able to present with you um, either virtually or in person. And then that is important because in your application, which we'll go over, you need to be able to check off the box that you have reached out to them and they have confirmed that they're going to speak um, at a certain time. And so after you've brainstormed your projects, you've contacted the speakers and they've confirmed that they're gonna work with you. Uh, you're then gonna reach out to Lisa Lennox here at Florida Humanities and say, hey, I would like to apply. Um, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, maybe do, do you think it's wise to see a sample successful application or would you like to pre-review my application? Um, we are more than happy to help in that way just to make it really easy on you because I know a lot of us are juggling many different tasks at this point. So we wanna, we really wanna help you do the humanities programming that you need in your community. And so after you contact with Lisa, then you're gonna apply for funding. And of course we recommend submitting the deadline before noon on June 25th. Um, if you're one of those people that likes to wait to the minute before, uh, we recommend just troubleshooting um, any sort of issues. There's always issues with technology. Just try to get that application in a little bit earlier than that. So now that we've gone over what the Florida Talks program is, um, we're gonna look a little bit at the applications. So overall, of course, like any grant application, we're gonna ask you to write a little bit about your program and what it's going to look like. So as grant makers and evaluators of your grant application, we kind of get a good picture about what the successful program is going to look like. So the narratives that you are gonna to have to write are listed here. One is history and mission of the organization. Um, that's pretty simple, of course, your, your background, if you have worked with Florida Humanities before, um, we pretty much detail exactly what we need there. And then program format, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be on Zoom? If not Zoom, is it gonna be on Microsoft Teams? What is the virtual platform? Is it virtual? If it's in person, are you recording it? Where's the recording going to live? Um, the next, of course, is target audience and reaching underserved communities. This is very important to us. We really want to make sure that you're thinking deeply about the people that are not oftentimes a part of the conversation or maybe don't feel like they're welcome at the table of, of listening to these, um, these talks or maybe uh, coming to the space that you have that you want to give them. So how are you specifically working with different communities in your area to make sure that all feel welcome at the table and that you're really paying special attention to this. And then next, of course, is marketing and promotion. How are you gonna get the word out to this pro, uh, you, these one, two, or three programs? And then impact evaluation, how you're going to evaluate the success of it and what is the large scale impact in the community? And then fees, are you going to charge anything for these events? Um, we recommend not so that they're all free because it, you know, it makes it so easy. This is one to three programs, but we just need you to confirm that there. So this is what a successful narrative looks like. Um, and as you can see, it is very brief. That is great because it doesn't mean that you have to write you know, a, a dissertation in order to apply for this grant. You just have to be very clear, organize, provide detail, make every sentence count, um, and focus really on the program you are asking for support for. So here is an example of a program format narrative. Of course, you can see here, they're gonna bring in three speakers. They've listed them. They've talked about the software they're going to use, which is Zoom, when they're going to be. So you can see it's very, very straightforward. And then target audience and reaching underserved communities. Um, this is what they've had there talking about their, um, their target community and how it impacts underserved communities. And the budget, you're gonna be very happy to see this. The budget is all in the application. There is no downloading of another budget form for you to try to navigate through and put things into different um, sections. It is all right here in the application. So we're asking you to think about uh, what funds you're gonna be using towards the speaker's fee. Again, keep in mind, no more than 300 per uh, speaker. Um, travel. Uh, if the speakers are requesting any travel or lodging, 
Um, this does not have a limit like the speaking fees do. So if they're traveling from out of state, which is all, I think very unlikely, they're all, most of them are Florida based, but if they have any mileage or lodging. Um, so this can be covered through the grant or it can be also covered through cost share. Um, if they are either donating their travel or if uh, it is being covered by your organization or maybe another organization is partnering with you and they are sponsoring the travel of the speaker. Um, that can either be listed uh, in cost share. And then of course, promotion, you see here that WWF um, requested $100 for promotion, um, which we granted. And then you can also request funding for postage and then other. You can see here that other is software subscriptions, um, for virtual programs, maybe Zoom, maybe you have to get Zoom and you don't have Zoom right now. Uh, rental of audio visual equipment, if it's in person, all right there. And then at the very end is where it says budget detail. You're going to say exactly what the makeup of each of these different line items are. Now, the uh, document you do have to attach, like I said before, is the confirm confirmation of Florida Talks program speaker. So you can see here, um, there's three spots where you can enter your speaker if it's going to be in person or virtual, the expected attendance. Um, this can of course just be a, a rough number. Maybe your Zoom room only allows for 100, so you would put 100 there. Um, and then check the box if the scholar or presenter has agreed to, part to participate. And we do require that they have to agree to participate before you apply, um, just so we make sure that's, that's set in stone and we all have an understanding of who your speakers are gonna be. So let's talk a little bit about cost share. I kind of mentioned it when we're going over budget, but I wanted to give a little overview about what cost share is, because sometimes this can be a little bit of a, a challenging concept for folks where people get a little intimidated saying, gosh, like I don't think I have cost share to match a thousand dollars. My organization is very small. We're a very lean, mean fighting machine and um, cost share is just really challenging for us. I wanna assure you that there are so many creative ways to come up with cost share that can, doesn't have to necessarily be cash in hand that you are paying out out of your organizational budget to put on this program. It can be simply costs that are um, donated or costs that are already um, a part of your organization that can be considered in-kind services. But what cost share is, is it's essentially a match. So it is all those funds that contribute to the success of the project that are outside the funds that are requested by Florida Humanities and that are granted by Florida Humanities. So we're going to really simplify this for a moment. Um, say, for example, your project in total is a lemonade stand and the funds that you are requesting from Florida Humanities is to just buy the lemons for your lemonade stand. So you are going to request and you are awarded $200 to buy lemons. That's a lot of lemons. But what you need to do is show your match and your cost share. So the cost share would be all those other funds that go into the lemonade stand outside of the lemons. So say you have a really kind neighbor that's going to just donate a table. And they're not going to charge you anything for it, but the table is worth $50. So that $50 table would be recorded as in-kind cost share. Now, also, uh, your mom is donating uh, $20 to print some posters to put up around the neighborhood. So um, the, that $20 in printing at home, that would also be in-kind donated cost share. And then your neighbor friend is going to donate their time. Say they work for $15 an hour, typically, and they're going to work 10 hours at this lemonade stand. That would be $150 of donated volunteer time directly spent on this project. So that would be right there, cost share. Now, cost share cash is, oh darn, we have lemons, we've got a table, we got printer, but we don't actually have a lemonade juicer. So you have to go to the store um, with cash that was uh, gifted from mom to buy yourself a really nice lemonade juicer. And so that would be the cost share cash that comes in. So all together with the $200 in the funds awarded by Florida Humanities for lemons, the cost share cash uh, in, in kind, your total project budget comes to $520. Um, and you can see that's more than a one-to-one -one match, right? Because we do require that you record all eligible cost share, uh, which is why you're not just recording the cash from mom and the, uh, the $150 from the, uh, the, the friend that's coming over, their hourly rate. You're also gonna record the table and the printing because those are all costs associated with the lemonade stamp. 
And the reason we require all eligible cost share to be reported is that we in turn have to report our cost share to the federal government because these funds come from, from the federal government. So we also have to meet a big match to them. So we need trickling down our grantees to record all their cost shares so we can record all that cost share in turn up the line to the federal government. So that's why we ask that. And so what does this cost share look like actually in practice? So here's an example of the, the Florida Talks application we were looking at and their cost share. So you can see here that they've listed staff time for planning, implementation and promotion, $1,000. Um, so that is their in-kind as well. And then value of airtime, um, $3,000 if they put in promotion. Again, that is also uh, in-kind value of printing and advertising, 500. Total estimated project cost, 5,000. 500. That is including the 1,000 from Florida Humanities. So as you can see, it's really quite easy to come up with the cost share. And Lisa is more than happy to brainstorm with you uh, ways to meet that. So do not feel intimidated. So now that we've looked at the Florida Talks program, we've showed you how easy it is to apply, the high chance of probability uh, for funding. Um, now we're going to go to questions and answer any questions you have. See, I promised you guys it would be pretty straightforward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my video and it looks like we have no questions in the chat or in the Q&A right now, um, which is good. That means we may have answered everybody's questions. <laughs> So we'll just give it a few more minutes. Lisa, did you want to jump in and say anything else about the Florida Talks program? You'll have to unmute yourself. Are you good? No, Lindsay, I think you did a great job going through the entire process. Just, I would like to encourage folks to, if they're really thinking about applying, just give me a call. I am happy to talk to anybody. Jeff asked a really good question. Is this a reimbursement grant? Uh, so no, it is not. Lisa, do you want to talk about that? No, actually, um, this is one of our few grants that you will get paid right after you're funded and complete the uh, the cash request form. So right up front. So that way you have money to pay your speakers and do your promotion. Yeah, because this program is really designed for organizations who have a smaller budget. We do prioritize organizations with budgets of less than 500000 you're welcome, Jeff. Yeah, so we wanna make this, um, so a lot of people don't have this money in hand to pay their panelists right off the bat. So that's why we make it very easy. And um, actually, Lisa, do you wanna talk a little bit about SAM.gov? Uh, do we require SAM.gov for Florida Talks? I do run a SAM.gov and yes, we do. Right, so if you're not familiar with SAM.gov, what that is, is uh, you have to register with the federal government's system that makes it, um, you eligible to receive this federal funding because while we are a nonprofit organization we're not with the state we're not with the federal this funding comes from the federal government so you just have to register on sam.gov um, and it's very easy to do so well it, it can be very easy it can be tricky but we have a quick guide and there's a call number there's webinars um, and just be very you know transparent with us if you're having issues but it's completely free to register and it's free to ask questions so keep that in mind then Miguel. I was just gonna add on to that, Lindsay, that with these grants, if you have never uh, applied for SAM.gov, it does take a little bit of time for it to show active, but as long as we can see it in processing, we will go ahead, if your application's fundable, fund your application in that status. Good, good point, Lisa. Miguel, um, you asked, uh, how should we go about valuing some of the cost share? For example, if you are able to provide the venue at no cost, how would one decide the value of being able to provide the venue? Um, if you rent out this venue to somebody, um, to organizations typically, then you would be able to record that going rate of what you would typically rent out that space for. Um, so if it's you no know, $200, $500, that's what you would record the venue rental uh, in kind of. Lisa, would you add anything else to that? No, that's right. Okay. Um, Jeff, you asked, will this grant be offered on an ongoing basis? So these have set deadlines. So you have to apply by June 25th to be considered for this grant cycle to be uh, awarded funding for the fall programming. 
Um, we will likely offer this program again in early 2022. <laughs> I can't remember what year it is. Uh, so it, it'll be ongoing in that way, but there are set deadlines you have to apply for. Good questions. Yeah, typically we have two grant deadlines a year. One that will end uh, usually in December, early December, and that's so you can schedule out your spring programming. And then one that ends May or June uh, for your fall programming. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right, any more questions? We'll hang on just a little bit to answer them, but hopefully we've convinced all of you to apply for Florida Talks. It's a really great program. Um, we're really happy to offer it. And it's unique that you have such a high probability of being awarded funding. That doesn't often happen uh, for grant programs. Even for our own, we try to make it very easy for you. All right, well, um, you're so welcome, Miguel. Um, if there's no other questions, then we'll go ahead and jump off. After this Zoom, I will send you an email um, probably this afternoon, or it could be Monday with a link to a survey. We would love for you to fill out the survey. Tell us how you found out about this webinar, what you liked about it, um, things you may have wished you would have seen in the future so we can improve it going forward. We do have two more Florida Talks webinars uh, before the deadline in June, so tell your friends. Uh, to uh, to view those. We'd love to have them. And uh, we'll also send you, of course, the speakers directory for you to peruse that as well, as well as the website for Florida Talks and Lisa's contact information. So thank you all so much for joining and um, we hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.